welcome back to the International Down Low, where we give you the low down on the teams and players going to the International. From their humble beginnings to their biggest victories, their darkest secrets, and their most proud achievements. Their memes, their dreams, we got it all here, so let's get started. This week we visit the bad boys of CIS, the anti-heroes who rose from a dying region to form one of the last hopes of a proud people, TVP. If there's one word to describe the CIS region in Dota 2, that word would be change. Back in TI1 when the meta was dominated by the Chinese, aka long farm intensive games, CIS blasted through the meta with a hyper aggressive push style that decimated farming teams and sent shockwaves through the world. The great divide Dota. But when the world took notice and decided to emulate their pushing style, CIS changed again to perfect the team fight and decimate pushing teams in their typical style of a cacophony of CIS carnage. For a long time, CIS was considered the greatest region in Dota, innovating and mastering new and exciting metas and introducing the world to new and extremely talented players. But the fire that burned so bright in the TI1 era began to dim, and the darkness began to set in. A darkness created by none other than the golden boys themselves of Navi. Navi, a team that was so loved that they could do no wrong, a team that emulated CIS pride and would forever be known as the greatest team in history of the region started to fade, and they refused to go down without a fight. Attempting to bolster their ranks with as many new talent as they could, Navi went to work in 2015 and 16, swapping out player after player, giving new and old talent offers that they just couldn't refuse and ripping the scene apart in the process. Teams like Vega, Empire, and VP were torn apart by the constant shuffles, and eventually CIS went into complete disarray, with not a single CIS team getting into TI6 except for a direct invite to Navi, who placed dead last. It would seem that the region that shaped Dota 2 to the game that we know it as today, the region with the most pride of them all, had died a cruel death by their own favorite team. But in the ashes of CIS, one flame began to grow. A flame built by the foundations of the fire which burned from the hearts and minds of the Great Red Bear. The flame of Virtus Pro, one of the last hopes of CIS. VP had never been in the spotlight while Navi was around. They were the Luigi of the CIS Dota scene, with adequate performances but a general plague of mediocrity. Their biggest achievement since their creation being their victory at Dream League Season 3 versus Navi for $50,000. Yeah, that's since their inception. That's eight years! Mediocre results aside, the team was also plagued by controversy, withdrawing from the Summit due to secretly having a stand-in during the Summit 5 Qualifier Grand Finals and having players banned from Star Ladder, kicking longtime players, and even the entire organization dropping the squad. Twice. Nope, VP have never been the golden boys of CIS like Navi. They've never had all the fans, they've never followed all the rules, but when the scene was destroyed by trading, infighting, and underperformance, it wasn't the Boy Scouts who saved that region. No, it was the fucking bad boys of VP. The anti-heroes the region never respected have become the saviors that no one expected. The first signs of life came from the newly formed squad after a complete disband of the team in 2016 due to less than stellar performances and an utter failure to place a TI6. Not a single member remained, and the org went on to find five completely new players. Well, new wish. You see, the effect of the great swap period in CIS Dota means that all these players know each other like true comrades. Pretty much every CIS player has played on each CIS team at least once, and they know each other to the point where their skirmishes are more reminiscent of a sibling rivalry than two competing pros. But something about this family was different. These brothers knew how to kick some ass. Out of nowhere, VP decimated the Summit 6, losing only two games in the event and 3 0 the recent major winners OG like it was goddamn no. Reminder, this was the very next Summit after they had been removed for cheating a year before with a different squad. Insane. But it doesn't stop there. The new squad went on to place fifth at the Boston Major and continued to impress more and more until their time had finally come. Their time to prove to the world that they were the best CIS had to offer. The region's first ever major. The crowd was disappointed at Kia. For the first CIS major, the hometown heroes Navi weren't even there. They would chant Navi's name when the teams were winning just to pretend that the only team of worth from the region was there. But then something strange happened. VP, the team that the region had never loved, the team that they had always forgotten, started to win and win, and win. The pride CIS lost was back on that main stage in a new form, and the sarcastic cheers for Navi turned to the real cheers for a new hero, VP. They went up against OG, the greatest team in the world, and they gave them a battle of a lifetime all the way up to game five, with OG barely squeezing out a victory by split pushing. They might not have won, but when the crowd left the arena that night for the first time in six years, they cheered for a new team. They cheered for VP. The haters said that VP lost because they only played a few heroes, so in Summit 7, the next major tournament, they picked 81 one different heroes in that tournament in a display of skill and trolling their haters, the likes of which no one in Dota 2 has ever seen before. Yes, this is not the old VP who sits in the shadows of their forefathers. This is not your typical Dota 2 team. VP are reborn with a flame of CIS in their hearts, built from the ashes of a ruined scene to show the world and their fans that they are the new kings. This is their VP, and all the other VPs before it don't hold a candle. There is only one last challenge before their final victory is sealed, before they finally win the hearts of their people and the admiration of the world. The final prize, the international. So let's take a look at the bad boys of the CIS and see what makes them kick so much ass.
The only member of the VP roster who used to be on the VP squad, Lil has a long-standing loyalty to VP and is considered by many to be the face of the team. Lil began his career in MVMI, a team created by DK Phobos and Go Black, two legends of the scene. The team was created to find new and rising talent and give them the opportunity to play with old, experienced teammates in a new setting. Players like Scandal, Mag, and FNG all had a stint on the team and learned the skills to be the household names that they are today. But Lil stayed with the team until it was picked up by VP as VP Polar, an experimental side squad. Eventually, the side squad became the main squad and after minimal results with the real VP and after a complete drop of the organization from Dota, Lil and his friends created Polarity, a blue theme squad consisting of four out of five people from the VP Polar squad. No affiliation with VP Polar guys, trust me, it certainly wasn't a cover by VP to grow a secret squad shortly after the disband drama. No, 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 even though a longtime VP employee was their manager, nope, no conspiracy here. Anyway, Polarity disbanded in July of 2016 and what do you know, VP returned two months later with Lil back at the helm. People may know Lil from his Twitter or his interview remarks because he is a no bullshit kind of guy. He is honest and gives his opinions freely, and those opinions are usually pretty hilarious. But while most shit talkers lack skill to back him up, Lil has consistently been a monster when it comes to Dota. Known for his incredible team fighting and split second decision making, Lil shocked the world most notably with his Weaver plays at Boston Major, where he would transition from being the offlane Weaver to the support Weaver by using the new and seldom used Ags on his teammates. And by the end of the game, he would be the hard carry. Lil's ability to control the game and excel at literally every position gave his team an edge and showed the world that the oldest member of VP could still come up with new tricks. I even tried to coin the term Little, the Lil Beetle, to describe it, but everybody thought it was lame, so whatever. In the end, Lil is one of my favorite players in Dota 2 because he isn't afraid to talk shit, but he cares deeply about winning the respect of his community. He was trained by the old guard of CIS, and behind that rough exterior in every interview, he shows love for his fans and a desire to finally win over the people of his region. Lil has said that he would rather get second place with people that are decent human beings than first with a bunch of assholes, and wants to give the fans something that they can cheer for. Under all that talk and all that showboating, the truth is, all Lil wants to do is bring back pride to CIS and their fans, and he works tirelessly to do so. Before Kiev, Lil was asked a strange question, why won't you win this major? He responded with, VP won't win this major so that we can win TI later. Second place is all we need for the invite. Coincidence? Or is the grand plan of the Lido finally being set in motion? Okay, fine, the name is bad. Moving on. The strong and mostly silent type, no one began his Dota 2 career after watching Navi go up against IG in 2012 at the first international. After watching the Ukrainian players win, he begged his friend for a spare beta key and drove headfirst into Dota to pro gaming. His big break came in 2014 as one of the original members of the new Vega Squadron along with Solo and Nine Pasha. They hit their stride around ESL New York 2015, winning the tournament on the back of his fantastic mid performance on Quap and Shadowfeed. The team went on to place first in many qualifier spots, but would commonly place low during the actual tournaments, leading to the frustration of the team. Known as a man who never tilts, no one and his team were one of the only losing teams after TI5 to not swap the roster and continued with that same squad throughout the first two majors. The fact that that team stuck together is much accredited to him. Despite his camaraderie, when two of his friends decided to part for the new VP squad, no one decided that he had to join them and left Vega for a new team and a new adventure. Loyal, skilled, and lovable, no one is a man of conviction and one of the few players in CIS that attempts to stick it through hard times by self-improving rather than moving on to a new squad. But don't let that shit fool you, because no one is just as much of a badass as the rest of the boys. Named the CIS Sumail by his peers, no one has become a terror for many mids in his short time in the scene. He enjoys his rivalry with Sumail, who he considers the best mid in the world, and while he commonly shows Ichi respect, he also makes it his personal mission to call them out and kick their shit in as much as possible. Even Subail himself said that no one is the mid that he fears the most, and as the wins continue to roll in, it becomes more and more obvious why. Like Lil, no one commonly talks about his fans, shouting them out if they have any, and focusing on growing more and more in the scene. No one might not have the smile or the charms as CIS's favorite mid, Dendi, but what he does have is the ability to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the greatest players of our time and the strength to perform under that pressure. Nah, he's got a nice smile too. What a good boy. Nine Posh has a habit of moving on to teams and getting better. His stint in Vega netting him decent results, but excelling in polar and gaining even more skill in his time in VP. Sure, Fantastic Five wasn't great. They only placed fifth in the TI6 Open qualifiers, but hey, that team only existed for a month, so who cares? Pasha moved from Fantastic Five after Solo. His old Vega teammate told him that the new VP wouldn't be a success without him and that they needed him specifically. Not known to let an old teammate down, Pasha took the plunge and left for the squad. Pasha, like his teammates, is not known for his subtlety. His original name, Nine Pasha Bashu, translated to I am Pasha and I am fucking wrecking, which is, <laughs> well, fairly accurate, if not very PC. After a talk with Vlad, he went with a more professional 9 Pasha tag, 
but I assure you, he is still fucking wrecking. Despite being an incredible position one carry in Vega, Night Pasha claimed that he finds the position boring and enjoys his time in a position three, being more active in roaming in teamfights. But his style of hard carry farming mixed with excellent roaming make him a serious foe for any who hope to get a last hit on the map. After the loss of Kiev, Nine Pasha was very vocal about wanting his revenge against OG, claiming that all they did was farm and split push, implying that they didn't fight as they should have, like men. He hungered for another shot at him, and that shot came at the seventh seven when his manly plays were a terror upon OG, and he ripped him apart piece by piece. Pasha is a simple man. When he was asked what he would spend his prize money on at TI5, he said he would get a new computer because he plays from a land cafe. When asked what he would do with the key of major cash, he said he would get a apartment. And when he was asked what he would do the next time he met OG, he said he would fucking wreck him. Well, that last one he didn't really say, but hey, uh, we'll see if it's accurate when they meet up at TI7. Ramsey666 started playing Dota 2 at the tender age of 16 and has been making it a living hell for the other carries ever since. Once going by the handle Roma Timbersaw, he has since grown from his love of playing pub timber to showing the world that he plays like a literal demon. The typical Russian player, he has played in over nine teams in his two years of competitive Dota, with every org trying to snag him as fast as possible. One of these incidents had a little bit of drama as he was let go from Team Spirit for sharing that his contract with Spirit was soon up to Team Empire, who were scouting him post Shanghai Major. See? Innocent looking boy, but just as much of a badass as the rest of the stack. Who could blame Empire though for trying to steal him because Ramses is one of the most skilled carries to come out of the region despite his young age. The first CIS player to reach 9k and frequently the force behind VP's team fights, Ramses, despite his age, is a natural when it comes to position one carrying. VP tends to put a lot of faith into Ramses, drafting him for heroes like Sven and Spectre, who can make or break a match depending on if they are played effectively. But when it comes to Ramses, he has yet to let them down. Not much else is known about this newcomer to the Dota 2 scene, but I'm sure we will learn more about him at the International. Solo, the captain and support of Team VP, has been in the scene for some time. Originally tagged as Solo Line Abuse, he named himself after his habit of going mid and completely abusing the enemy mid to the point where they would be so humiliated they had to leave. He found success as a solo mid on Team ROX, gaining more and more popularity until the big incident that would nearly end his career. Looking for a little side action, Solo bet against his team in Star Ladder 2013 in a rather inconsequential match to a popular betting site. Whether or not he actually threw the match is unclear, but what is clear is that they did in fact lose, and the betting site informed Star Ladder that Solo had bet against his own team. Star Ladder went public and was furious, giving Solo a lifelong ban, and soon after ROX kicked him because of the scandal. The total amount Solo won for the bet, the bet that nearly costed him his career, the bet that got him banned from three separate tournaments, $322. And thus, the international symbol for throwing on purpose in Dota, the 332, was born. It didn't look like the end for Solo, but realizing his mistake, he fessed up to his crimes immediately, and the lifelong ban soon became a year one. Solo took time off from Dota to sharpen his skills. He refused to give up his dream for one little mistake, and went to work proving to the world that he was still worth something. It would be nearly impossible, as the majority of the Dota world thought of him as a cheat and a loser. But upon his return, no one could deny his incredible skill, and Vega decided to give him a shot. And that was a shot that paid off immensely. Vega and Solo went on to win tournament after tournament, and eventually the world forgot about the young player who bet against himself, and now only saw the experienced pro who would never let himself down ever again. The backbone of VP and the man many a credit to building the squad, VP is Solo's dream for himself and his friends. A dream of redemption and victory. No one else in Dota knows how it feels to be thought of as the villain as much as Solo, so it makes sense that Solo would be the man to collect the black sheep of the CIS region and bring them together to become the heroes that the region truly needed. And that is the story of VP. Good friends that seldom fight out of the game and are monsters when they are in it. No, it's not the VP that you saw in True Sight, but something more. Hey, you know what? It actually kind of is the team that you saw in True Sight. Yeah, they curse. Yeah, they give each other shit. Yeah, they get a little pissed off sometimes. But guess what? That's because these boys ain't the goody two-shoes. These boys ain't the media-trained Boy Scouts. Nope, every single one of these guys has had a controversy, a chip on their shoulder, and a whole lot of skill to back all that shit up. And hey, that's why we love them. Thanks for watching the TI Download. Special shout out to, of course, to all of our patron guys who helped make this video and who helped work on the script. A shout out, of course, to Gorgon the Wonder Cow and Maustrix, two dudes who helped me research and write this script. Of course, Casimir Jones, the editor, David the Graphics, and Sproink, the sound guy as well. If you want to see any of their work, it is linked below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I do hope to see you at TI7.